Welcome to TMJ4 News at 3.30. We have a Polish Fest special in honor of what would have taken place last month. Dzień dobry, everybody. That happens to be hello in Polish. Welcome to another show where we pay tribute to one of Milwaukee's famous ethnic festivals. More than 20 events were canceled this summer due to the pandemic. Claire Koenig with Visit Milwaukee is here with us now. We appreciate you being with us today for our important show. Of course, happy to be here. Yeah, you know, Claire, I, you know more than anybody how important these festivals have been to the economy. Can you just talk about that a little bit? Sure. So um, for all of the ethnic festivals, we don't have a super exact number of what that economic impact is. We do know that the loss of all of them means the loss of tens of millions of dollars to Milwaukee's small business owners, its employees, um, and on and on. But it the loss is so much more than economic. It is psychological. You know, these are family vacations. These are out-of-staters coming to Milwaukee just to celebrate their heritage. Um, it's people saving all year to do genealogical research like they do at Polish Fest. Um, so it there is a real cost in wages um, lost and in businesses who have lost that money, but it also, it goes so far beyond that. Yeah, you're right. It is, it's been a sad summer in that regard. You know, Claire, can you give us an idea? What can people do to help festival organizers, perhaps if they want to support the causes? What can the general public do during this pandemic to help out? Sure. Well, um, there are, for all the ethnic festivals, there are certainly businesses that operate, you know, regular standalone businesses that then sell at the festivals. There are Polish restaurants. There are Italian restaurants, of course. You can celebrate your personal heritage or your friends um, by patronizing those businesses. And same with supporting artists from those communities. There are um, cultural events in Milwaukee year round pandemic or not, and there are some virtual ones, believe it or not, too. Um, so it, it, the spirit can still be had. It is just, of course, drastically different this year. Yeah, we just have to be positive. We appreciate you being with us, Claire Koenig, and giving us some insight. We hope they return next year. We're just going to keep our fingers crossed because this course. can't happen again. <laughs> Thank nope. you very much, Claire. <laughs> yeah. America's largest Polish festival would have been in its 40th year this year. And now joining us this afternoon is Jeff Kudurski, president of Polish Fest and the executive director of the Polish Heritage Alliance Center in Franklin. We appreciate you being with us this afternoon. Thank you for having us. I appreciate the opportunity. Now, I hear you have a musical guest with you. I wasn't told who you have. <laughs> I do. I have Jimmy Lockie here. Take it away, Jimmy. He, he's... Um, He's part of our entertainment at Polish Fest and the main gate, you might see him, and he helps us out a lot here at the Polish Center and Community Center. Well, Jimmy, thank you for being here. Sounds great. Are you gonna play a little something for us, Jimmy? Sure, be glad to. <laughs> Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> Yay! Beautiful. You know, that gets you in the mood. And when you when we think of Polish Fest, we think of the polka, we think of accordions, we think of all of this. Can you tell us, when did you know you were going to have to cancel the festival and, and tell people that it just wasn't going to happen this year? Tell us about going through that process. It was really a tough decision because all along we're trying to, we, we tried to reschedule it. We're debating on whether rescheduling and it just the pandemic just didn't happen and it was just not in the light this year. Uh, so that's why we're hoping that we come back strong next year. Uh, we have the dates of June 11th through the 13th of 2021. It'll be our 40th year, bigger than better. Yeah, and you know, Polish Fest is something, it's usually the first festival that kicks off and this is very important to supporting the Polish community. Can you tell us what people can do to still support their the heritage and just the whole cause behind Polish Fest? Because we know a lot of people are helped during this. Exactly, and it's, we have the Polish Community Center in Franklin, Wisconsin, where we do a number of events here, fundraising events, 
Uh, we have the Polish Cafe going all the way through uh, Wednesdays through August. We have delicious food. Uh, hopefully we'll have a Jimmy back with us this year, uh, coming back as soon as we can, capable of doing it. And again, uh, our website, www.polishfest.org, has all the information, or polishcenterofwisconsin.org has the information on it. But just to help support the community and share our heritage. Yeah, you know, and there's a lot of things. That's very important. And I know you're planning for next year. I'm hoping that we're going to have all of our festivals back bigger and better. Are you already in the works for planning for next year again? Oh, yeah. And, you know, we're, we're blessed to have some sponsors that are stuck in with us this year, and they're going to stay with us next year already. We're making commitments. I'm really happy about it. And it's just, it, and again, it's not just a festival. It's actually a, an educational living showcase of the arts, the culture, and the heritage that's uniquely Polish. And the money that we raise at Polish Fest goes in the form of scholarship and costs associated with a variety of educational programs of folk art, music, language, cooking, here at the Polish Community Center in Wisconsin, as well as dances. So we have a lot to be proud of and a lot of great Polish heritage events. And we're going to, again, we're, we're hoping and banking that it's going to return next year. Jeff Kudersky, president of Polish Fest, we're going to talk to you a little bit later, but we thank you for being with us in the beginning of the show. Thank you. Thank See you, you in a thank little you. bit. Now, here are a few fun facts about Poland. Now, when you actually turn 18 years old, you become an adult, but you should celebrate your name day, not your birthday. Each name is listed in all the calendars in Poland, so name day is actually often more important than a birthday because everyone remembers it. I never knew that. Now, if you're a foreigner living in Poland, you might have a hard time because Polish is considered one of the world's most difficult languages. Also, Poland is considered one of the most religious countries in Europe. 94% of the population is Christian, 86% Catholic. Pope John Paul II is of Polish descent. We'll be back with more fun. Welcome back. Each year, every year, it seems that everybody comes just a little bit more Polish on Punchki Day. It's a tradition that takes place the day before Ash Wednesday. In this flashback to Punchki Day, Pete Zervakis brings us a refresher on the history of the famous Polish treats. Punchki in what is now Poland date all the way back to the Middle Ages. That's according to the cooking site Mobile Cuisine. Now as the years passed, Punchki became popular as a final hurrah before Lent. People would cook them to use up all the butters, the sugars, the lards in their homes so they wouldn't be tempted to eat that stuff during the fast. Now, traditionally, plum jam and wild rose hip jam were the punchki fillings of choice, but as Polish immigrants came to the United States and they brought the tradition with them, they started using other fillings, maybe modern ones like raspberry and chocolate. It's an art. It's an art form that's been passed on from generation to generation. Challenges is a lot of people don't pass that recipe on down written so it's kind of like taste this and punch of that you know but it's it's a learning experience now the executive director of the polish heritage alliance says the polish center in franklin is one place to get your punchki fixed today workers there took pre-orders here's video of those beauties being made at papa's bakery which has the polish center's exclusive recipe turned out more than eight thousand punchki this year pete zervakis today's tmj4 Thank you, Pete. A little flashback, and here's L Little Miss Polish Fest Princess. It, isn't she adorable? She is eating a punchki. Emma attended the second annual punchki day party at the Polish Center back in February, and it, it's just delightful to see a picture of her. Thank you, Emma. And another popular Polish tradition carried on this year despite the pandemic, the Polonaise restaurant Easter dinner curbside edition. The St. Francis restaurant served close to 600 meals that included Easter baskets filled with wine, desserts, eggs. The Brzezinski family moved to Milwaukee from Poland and opened Polonaise nearly 40 years ago, and it is still going strong. Now, as you can tell, we are turning our attention to all things Polish and the cuisine. And if you can't think of any popular Polish dishes, we thought we'd help you out. So here's the first one, cabbage rolls. They are a traditional Polish dish. 
and you've probably seen them in a lot of other countries though as well. Neighboring countries make a variation of this cabbage rolls. It's just seasoned with meat, rice, and wrapped in boiled cabbage leaves, then baked in a light tomato sauce. Sounds good. And pierogi are perhaps one of the most widely known and loved Polish dishes. These stuffed dumplings are versatile and they can be made sweet, stuffed with fruits or chocolates or anything you might want, or filled with savory food. That's what they're usually filled with, stuff like meat and potatoes. <laughs> well, Milwaukee is known to love our sausage. And Polish was well, one of the Milwaukee Brewers' famous Johnsonville racing sausages. But did you know that the word kielbasa just really means sausage in general, so no specific type. Very interesting. And back here, Jeff Kudinski. Thank you, uh, Kudurski, excuse me, Executive Director for the Polish Center of Wisconsin. You know, you have a special event coming up tomorrow that really has an emphasis on Polish cuisine. Can you tell us about that, Jeff? Well, it's, it's you're making me hungry, so, you know, I guess I have a variety. <laughs> me too. Polish sausage. I got our, our pork shanks with sauerkraut. Of course, pierogi, and we have this going on every Wednesday. It's our Polish cafe through August, and we're going to feature in, uh, all sorts of different Polish uh, menu items, anything from Clement's Polish sausage to braised pork shanks, uh, pork schnitzel is tomorrow, $15, uh, roasted bone-in chicken for those who do not wish to have some traditional Polish. We have meat-filled potato dumplings. Mm, wow. And <laughs> Mm. And again, we have like Chicken Supreme available as well. And of course, our full bar here at the Polish Center, Wisconsin, it's four to eight o'clock. Wow, very nice. How's business been going through the pandemic? Have you been able to hang in there? Uh, yeah, and it's, and it's a, we have this area pretty, it's all socially distanced, so it's pretty safe. We have dining indoors and out. We also do takeouts available. And this Friday will be the last fish fry for July. So we have our fish fry, breaded hand, breaded cod, baked cod, and pierogi. Um, so we're doing that on Friday. But then in August, we're going to continue with the Wednesdays, Polish Cafe. Well, Jeff Kudurski, uh, you've just made me very hungry. And in Polish, I'd like to say thank you, or zekuichi. I don't know if I said that right. You can say it better for me. <laughs> zekuichi or something. <laughs> I try. <laughs> I yeah, like we it. Well, thank you. For us here. <laughs> oh, Hopefully, wow. Jimmy. You know, oh, guess. Yay. And we, we also do weddings at Fuller Center, Wisconsin as well, helping the COVID brides. Wow. I'm loving Jimmy. I'm loving you, Jeff. We appreciate you being with us this afternoon. And go ahead and keep playing, Jimmy, if you'd like. You can find more information about Polish Cafe on our website, tmj4.com. Just head to the link section. We'll be back with much more fun. This is TMJ4 News at 3.30. Thank you both. Polish folk dances are a tradition rooted in 10 centuries of Polish culture and history, and many of the dances stem from regional customs and historical events. And here in Milwaukee, Serena Polish Folk Dance Ensemble educates the public through dance, songs, costumes, and customs of Poland. And Vice President of Serena and Serena Dancer, Gosha Warmsbacher joins us now. Is, did I say your name? Is it Gosha? Gosha, very well, yes. Okay, I, excuse me, I'm having a hard time hearing. Well, it looks like you have a few guests with you and that's very special because you have, uh, this is sort of like a family affair, correct? This is definitely a family affair. Um, I actually have four kids, all of us are dancing, including uh, my husband. I even uh, was able to convince my husband to join the group. And uh, yeah, we go to all the events together and have a lot of fun. You look so festive and it looks, I, you know, I love to see the costumes of various countries. You know, what's the best thing about coming together as a family to do an activity like this? I guess this is a bonding experience. It is a bonding experience, but uh, for me particularly, it is about uh, cultivating the Polish culture to dance, uh, different uh, customs, costumes, I'm happy to share uh, a little bit of my heritage with uh, uh, residents of Milwaukee and Wisconsin and uh, Midwest. 
Yeah, you know, and I think people really enjoy it as well because people, I think Polish people are known for having big hearts and having a lot of fun. And I think you're going to give us a, a little sample of some of the things that your family does and is able to entertain people throughout the area. Yes, uh, if you'd like, the kids could uh, show a little bit of dance. Um, again, our dance group uh, has a huge range of ages, anywhere from four to um, probably seven years old. Uh, I'm dancing in an adult group, but my kids are part of Serenka Children's Dance Ensemble. So uh, if you'd like, they can show you a little bit of uh, folk dancing right now. Oh, we would love to. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, ready? Hello? have a special meaning in different in different cultures. Can you give us a description of the meaning of that dance or do you have any idea? Sometimes we don't know. Yes, so this was Trojak. Trojak is from the southern part of Poland and it basically, uh, the basic step is just move your leg from right to left. Uh, it's very, very popular in the southern part of Poland. Uh, yeah, in the southern region. Well, Gosha Wormsbacher, I really appreciate you being with us this afternoon and your kids, your family. Beautiful, beautiful dancing and keep having fun and keep dancing. Yes, and we can't wait to see you guys again next year at Polish Fest. The whole Serena Dance Ensemble is uh, looking forward to next year. Yes, and in person. Thank you very much. Thank we you. love the uh, little concert. This is TMJ4 News at 3.30. We'll be right back. Polish Fest is planning to return to the Summerfest grounds in 2021. And a reminder, all this summer, we're highlighting the different ethnic festivals that have been canceled during the pandemic. So tune in Friday to see what is next. We appreciate you joining us today at 3.30. Thank you so much for being with us and have a wonderful afternoon. TMJ4 News at 4 is next.